Alright guys, welcome to another episode of Arcade Body Shop. I'm Jeff, and we're back this time with the two Cubers. A lot of you guys hit me up, I was going to wait and not do any more until we had, we had the official launch, but he said do the Cubers, so we're going to do the Cubers. Um, let's explain a little bit. Uh, this is my good friend Williams. Uh, I got this a little while back. I actually feel bad because I did some work on it, but then I got tied up with some other projects. So I want to go ahead and get this knocked out before the show and do an amazing job on this. This thing's going to be pristine quality when we're done. Um, overall, the cab's in pretty good shape. Uh, you might have saw in a previous video, you saw me strip the, uh, the black paint. Somebody painted the whole thing black, even over the decal. We, we removed the decal. This guy's ready to go, and this is going to be the main focus of this uh, video series. We are going to do some stuff on this one as well. This is my friend Tim's, and no, you're not uh, misadjusted. This cabinet should look like that. Um, uh, upon first inspection, you're like, oh my god, it is a basket case, but it's actually not that bad. So we'll walk around the cabs, we'll look at them a little bit, I'll explain what's going on with each one of them. And uh, this one is awesome, man, because it, it's a true chance to save. Uh, somebody posted it, they were going to just do it as side art, you know, the, to, you know, wall art, cut one side off to the other side, they said it was unsolvable. I don't think it is, it definitely got some water damage. Um, but, you know, we can do the same thing we did to the Nintendo, cut a piece off, replace it, biscuit joint it, fade it, and this thing will be good as new. And there's not that many Q-Birds around, so anytime you get a chance to restore something and save a piece of arcade history, it's definitely worth doing it. So let's take a look around these two. We'll explain and notify uh, some of the problems, identify some of the problems, and then we'll go ahead and get into working on this guy right here. So uh, my plan today is hopefully get it sanded. Uh, bondo the spots that need to be bondoed and maybe, just maybe, get a coat of primer on it. So, our focus is going to be on this today. We'll, we got this one. We're going to be doing some stuff in the series too, especially replacing that bottom piece. But let's take a look at these cabs and see what we got going on here. So, this guy right here, um, like I said, I stripped the black paint off the side. It's actually not in bad shape overall. Uh, the edges are real, uh, pretty crisp. I mean, we'll have to sand them and, and see. Um, the big thing is going to be these horizontal holes um, that somebody put in here. We're going to have to go ahead and sand those down and uh, take those out. These are original. They're supposed to be there. And, uh, you know, for the most part, I think this cabinet's very solid. It just needs some TLC and some cleaning up. Uh, weird stuff in cabinets, man. It looks like somebody shot paintballs in there. I don't... It's really weird, the things that happen on cabinets sometimes. Um, they just painted over the decal. I went ahead and stripped that off. Um, so we got a good solid base on this one to start with uh, this side You can see where I removed the t-molding. I mean nice sharp edges So this shouldn't be that that horrible and this was the one that was gonna get Salvaged and burnt and I'm like look at that side art. It looks amazing You know this thing is in really good shape overall So what happened with this cabinet is kind of cool because you can like CSI these things is there's a there's a wooden base that holds it up and it fell off at some point on this side. So when this sat flat on the ground, that went ahead and soaked up a bunch of moisture down there. So, but it's definitely not anything that can't be fixed. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and cut like an eight inch strip. Uh, got some brand new MDF right over there. So we can cut a, a nice eight inch strip out and do exactly what we did on the, uh, the Donkey Kong cabinet, except do it with MDF. We got a little more, uh, you know, material to work with because this is three quarter inch. And uh, I think this is going to be a nice cabinet. I mean, overall, the artwork looks amazing. I mean, we'll see at what point what Tim wants to do. I mean, I, if this was mine, I would almost mask this off and then paint around it. But we'll go ahead and do a full restore on this. But like I said, this one's going to be kind of back burner. Tim got a second Qbert that he got recently, and it's more complete than this. So we're going to kind of look at both cabinets. And, uh, and go from there. Regardless, I'm gonna restore this and then you know we might just sell it as a done cab ready to go for somebody to put their internals in it. Maybe even me. You know, I don't have a Cuber yet, so we'll give it all the loving care that we do here at Arcade Body Shop and we'll see what we can do with it. But our main focus today is gonna be this guy. I wanna go ahead and get the side sanded down. I wanna get the back door off it, get everything ready to go and prep for the body work. And then hopefully we can get this thing bondoed and uh, primer today. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is go ahead and get this door off because there's bolts that come through, like this is a latch right here, and we're not gonna be able to sand around that. So we're gonna go ahead and take the hinges off, knock out the bolts from the side door, 
and uh, and we'll go ahead and go from there. So um, we'll go ahead and take these bolts. Just them up. Don't want to take the top one off. Take these bottom ones out. Hewer was cool the way they designed it though, how they put everything on the back door so you can just swing it out and work on it. I think that was pretty unique to what a lot of the cabinets were back in the day. Which you had to crawl on your hands and knees to work on. Alright, so we should be able to lift this off. Well, the hinges actually work like door hinges. So we'll go ahead and set this out of the way. These hinges. We've got black paint on them too. We're going to have to do those at some point. And then we want to go ahead and get our bolts out. The biggest thing I learned when doing our arcade repair is keep track of your parts because you get so excited you want to build and fix the game and then uh, that leads you to losing parts so I know some guys they sit there and put them in a bin I got these little bags and I literally I don't know I'm just uptight about it because I want to know where every piece and every part is so I will literally put these in there and then I'll take a Sharpie and I'll label it backdoor bolts. So, and then I throw that all in a bin. Um, it's just like working on cars back in the day, restoring cars, you want to know where all your parts are. So I'm going to go ahead and label this. I'll pull this one out and then we're going to go ahead and start sanding the side. And I got this uh, all laid out on the side. Um, what we're going to do is go ahead and give this a good sand. Right now it's really rough. There's some, still some black paint from the stripping that didn't come off and a couple other spots. We really want to sand down around these uh, horizontal holes that we're going to take out. So we're going to give this thing a good sanding, then we're going to go take a look at it and find out where our problem spots are, where we want to go ahead and do the Bondo. Um, all I'm using for this is an orbital sander, um, starting out with 120 grit, and then we're going to go from there, um, probably down to 220 to smooth it out before I go ahead and do the um, primer. So we're going to go ahead and do both sides. I'll do this side first and then we'll take a look. not chewed up at all it looks really really good um, there's one ding on this uh, corner up here I'm gonna feather that out with the sander a little bit more and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this wiped down we'll go ahead and do that now let's wipe it down get some simple green get the towel you can definitely not have enough paper towels in the shop that's for sure um, you do want to take care when you're wiping down your cabinets if they're MDF. 
you don't want to saturate them, but this is just good to just wipe it down and get a look at the wood. We almost brought it down to bare wood. Normally I wouldn't, um, but I wanted to make sure that this had a nice flat uniform surface and see how much residual is on there. Um, I wanted to make sure that it had a nice flat or a, you know, surface because I had some of that old black on there, and some of the old yellow on there, and some spots were bare. And uh, with Kubrick's, Kubrick's have like a kind of kind of glossy finish. It's kind of like an in between satin and uh, and gloss. Um, so you got to take extra care with those type paint jobs because they will show everything, every minor detail and and uh, dent and thing. So um, this one looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna just touch these sides a little bit more. I'll go ahead and do the other side off camera so you guys don't have to watch that whole ordeal and then we'll, we'll look at this and get ready to bondo. Okay, this is side uh, number two. We've got the other side all sanded. Same deal, pretty much looks the same. Um, looks like there's some like hammer marks or something like that. We'll see if we can take those out with the sanding. And then uh, just looking around the cabinet, this bottom edge is a little blown out. It's a little soft too, so I'll probably go ahead and hit this whole bottom edge with wood hardener uh, once we get it sanded down, um, just to give it a good solid base. And then, uh, yeah, it looks pretty good though, overall. I think this is gonna clean up just as nice as the other side. Um, like I said, we still got the horizontal holes that we gotta do, and all the edges look really good. So let's go get to sanding, and then uh, I'll come back once that's done. I'm not gonna have you guys watch me sand this whole thing and then uh, we'll get into some Bondo and doing some wood hardening. Side two, we got all sanded. It looks really good. Uh, we were actually able to get a lot of those, there was like hammer dents and stuff here. You can see a little bit of the round, but I was able to get most of them out just by sanding. And uh, that's the whole thing, guys. Take your time with this stuff. I mean, 90% of doing great arcade restores is the prep work because it's one step on top of another step and that previous step really dictates how your next step's gonna go. So take the time and, and just really, you know, get everything down to a good working starting surface before you start. You know, I know you want to rush through it and you want to get your game done. You know, if it takes you a week, two weeks, three weeks, I mean, heck, most of you guys waited since you were 10 years old to be able to get this game. What's a couple more weeks? Um, so just go at your own pace and, and take your time. It's just sanding and if you mess up, you can re-sand it or you can bondo what you messed up. So don't be afraid to do it. And um, so this one is looking really good. I'm actually really surprised like how well this cabinet looks like if you can look the edges are pretty pretty straight not real a lot of uh, edge work we're gonna have to do here I see this bottom is kind of blown out a little bit uh, this corner this front corner here seems a little soft so we're gonna go ahead and hit that with some uh, some uh, liquid hardener and then this edge right here we'll have to rebuild um, we're gonna hit it all with liquid hardener uh, first but what I want to do is set up the camera I want to show you a cool little trick with MDF, you can do uh, you can actually shape it pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up and show you guys how I can straighten this edge right here. If you look really close, you can see it's kind of pitted. It's not really square and straight. And we can make that razor sharp without even using Bondo. So we'll set up for that now. All right, so this edge right here, um, I got the camera set so you can actually see. It's not exactly squared, it's a little, you know, there's some bumps and stuff. And the great thing with MDF is you can actually shape it pretty, pretty good. Um, what you want to do is you take your sander and you have it flat. And what you do, especially back here where there's no T-molding, if you just tilt like five degrees, it doesn't take much. And actually angle in, you know, that's extreme, but what, that's what I'm talking about. If you angle in just a little bit, it will take down that material and give you a nice sharp edge. So what I do is I come down the back edge first and then I come back and smooth the top out. As you'll see, it will leave like a little bit of a, 
kind of like a burl up top, and then you take it back off with this, and it will give you a nice sharp edge. So let's go ahead and do, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I just leaned it just a little bit like I like I said like five degrees just not very much at all and I leaned it in and it's already sharpened up the edge quite a bit so now I'm gonna come across the top and smooth it all out and the great thing is this you can do this all around the cab and it really gives you that nice sharp factory edge especially when you're working on MDF a lot of people hate working on MDF I don't mind it I, I think it's actually easier to work with than plywood because you can shape it easier but you know, the second it gets wet, you got nightmares. So, um, you know, good, nice MDF like this, it's a pleasure to work on. So I'll go ahead and sand the top now and then I'll show you the edge up close. looking pretty good as you could sub before there were some divots and stuff now this top stuff that's just where it was swollen before so a little skim coat of Bondo what I'm talking about is look how sharp that edge is all the way down where we just did that there was nicks and cracks and all that it looked like this before you know see how it's all wavy and and all chipped out but now it's nice straight and flat so we come back with our nice little part of skim of uh, Bondo right here and to fix this corner and that's gonna look amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that again on the bottom down here and then we're gonna hit this with some liquid hardener. take a look at that now look at how nice that edge came out and came back even though this was the water damaged bottom you know it had just a slight bit of water damage it was loose but just by doing that angled in and as you look straight down you have a nice sharp edge like I said this water damage where we took it off a little skim coat of Bondo on that you're not even gonna see any of that but I'm just talking about how straight and razor sharp that edge is now and you can do that with uh, plywood cabs as well. It just takes a little longer. And uh, I use 120 grit sandpaper. Um, the orbital sander, I think, is the way to go on that. But uh, it's looking nice and sharp. And this, we're going to go ahead and hit with some liquid hardener now. And I'll show you how I apply that. All right, next up, we're going to go ahead and hit this bottom edge with some liquid hardener. Now, I don't do this all the time. I do it where I see, you know, Right here, you can feel it. It's it's a little softer than normal. Or if you have, you know, water damage where it's swelled, a lot of times you can use this liquid hardener and soak the material and then clamp it between two pieces of wood to pull it back in. Now this is, I mean, it looks good. It's it's three quarters of an inch thick, so 
you know, we didn't have any swelling. It just, from rubbing and, you know, sliding in and out next to other games, it, it swelled up a little bit and got frayed because it's just fibrous. So this stuff is magic. It works like glue that actually binds those fibers back together like they originally were. And it, it is super hard. Like it, when you try to sand this stuff, you know, afterwards, you really got to put some effort into it. So it will stop that from happening. It's really good to work, uh, use on uh, frayed um, plywood as well. If you got some uh, plywood that's like fraying up, kind of kind of like this. Like if you have veneer coming up like that, I'm probably going to replace this whole piece because it's just shot. But if you have some veneer like that, that it's peeling up, you can soak it down with the wood hardener, clamp it and re-glue everything. And a lot of times it will pull it back together on the cab for you. Um, so the thing is, this stuff is like water. So it's kind of hard to work with in that respect because it would just wants to go everywhere. And I've tried everything. I tried like, um, you know, the turkey baster syringes. If I got a really bad cab, I'll stick it in there with some liquid hardener and squeeze it and put it in there. And um, I was just trying stuff out one day. And the cool thing is liquid hardener, as long as it's in a contained bottle that's that's sealed, it won't it won't mess up. So what I did is I went ahead and put some in a spray bottle and that allows me to directly put it where I want to. Um, so we're gonna do that now. I'm gonna go ahead and, and get all set up, get some more liquid hardener in this, and then we'll go ahead and uh, get that all sprayed out. But this is definitely something you want to have at your disposal. I mean, it works on plywood cabs. It, you know, this and, and wood glue, a good quality wood glue, are definitely two things you wanna have handy at all times. So you'll see us using that a lot. Uh, throughout the series. All right, we're all set up. I put a little more in there. You don't want to put a ton in here because you don't want it to uh, be fuming out just what you need. And uh, what you do is essentially just get lined up with the area you want to hit. And then, like magic, it kind of soaks into the material. But the thing is, this stuff hardens, you know, fairly fast. Within probably an hour, this will be rock hard. And you just want to saturate the fibers. And it doesn't matter if you get a little overspray, you'll be able to sand that off, but go ahead and saturate the fibers and it will suck in there and it literally re-glues all those fibers back together. And um, the cool thing with MDF is it will suck it in, you know, a, a little ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this whole bottom because it had a little bit of fray. And when this hardens, I'll be able to come back with that same sanding pattern of the bottom at five degrees and especially this corner right here see where it's all kind of fuzzy let's just really soak that and let it soak in and you see like a candle will just wick it into there <clears throat> but that will stop all fraying it will stop everything and it won't swell the cabinet I mean I wouldn't go nuts and put you know 10 pounds of it on there but you know just you really want to saturate the fibers let it sit and now I'm going to do this top edge all the way down and just let this harden and when I come back I'll be able to sand that but as you can see it's soaking in there and this stuff turns like rock solid glue um, once you get it but that edge when we come back and sand it now will hold that razor edge and we won't have to do a lot of bondo all right, next uh, thing we're gonna address while we're waiting for the wood hardener at the bottom to dry is we have these horizontal holes and we gotta fill those. And um, you know, we, we can bond to those as they are. What I don't like doing is just leaving these as is because sometimes when you bondo, this ridge will show up and then you'll have to sand it and then redo it and you actually have to feather the bondo out this far. And uh, what I, I figured out a little way is actually just using a carriage bolt you know similar to like one of the ones on the side of a Nintendo I think that's what this is actually if you uh, get a carriage bolt and what you want to do is not go crazy is put it over the hole backwards the shape of the carriage bolt and then give it a couple of hits and what that does is it concaves it a little bit and it gives it a little bit more uh, for the bondo to grab onto so you don't have to go crazy with it but you just want to get all these holes and just dent them in and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. 
Now, I know that seems counterintuitive, like you're doing more damage to the cabinet, but what you want to do in this case is, if you can look, see how it makes like a little divot now? And that's much better because now you can come over with your Bondo and you're only going to have this little tiny area where if you just left it, you know, sticking up from the edges from, you know, you don't know if they drilled it from the inside out or, uh, you know, it, it might have raised the wood. But now it's definitely not. You have a little divot hole in each one and having that, it will actually grip the Bondo a lot better. So you got a little divot in each one. And what I'll do is before we Bondo that, I'll go ahead and just squirt a little thing of, uh, wood hardener down each one of these holes and then when we skim coat the bondo you literally will just go over that and it will just leave this little divot instead of, instead of having to feather out like this so that's the way that I deal with the side holes I'm um, gonna go ahead and hit it with liquid hardener and then we're ready to bondo all right I went ahead and got our bondo set up I got a little bit out there about a golf ball size uh, we don't need a lot because um, we're just doing this and maybe a little bit at the bottom we might mix up a new batch for the bottom but you got your cream hardener. Uh, it's always good to knead it a little bit inside the tube to mix it up. And, uh, and then with this small size, you only, oh, that's liquidy. Yeah, I think this old. Let's get some of this juice out of there. Maybe we gotta shake it up a little bit. Anyways, I've had this before where it gets all liquidy like that. And a lot of times it's because it's sitting in a 10,000 degree garage. Um, the liquid, it's fine though, because it actually hardens it the same. Um, so that's a little thicker. So we'll mix that up. It will still harden it up. You gotta love, 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 love South Carolina summers. I cannot wait till the fall. It's nice out here. You got, let's move it over here. You're looking for that pink color. Yeah, in the fall, it's nice, man. You open up both garage doors and then you just get everything going. And like I said, we don't need a real lot. So I'm just gonna skim coat these holes that we did. So there's one there. There's one there. These two. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spread it and I'm gonna pull across to just get the holes pretty much. Now almost every hole, even if you fill it with a dowel, you're gonna have to do it twice because it, it kind of bubbles up when you do it. But as you can see, we're only really filling those dents that we put in. And that's gonna save you a lot of time on the back end when you're trying to sand all this out. Because Bondo, although you can sand it out, it, uh, it takes some effort if you put it on too thick. So we're gonna do that. I'll do one more skim coat on each of these, make sure they got enough. And then I'll come straight and I'll pull it across. Because what you're all essentially doing is just trying to fill the holes. And like I said, we're probably going to have to come in because it's either going to it's either going to bubble up a little bit or it will sink in. And there's really no getting around that. So there you go. All right. So we'll let that sit for a little bit. And then we'll do a second coat. We also got to do that edge at the bottom. And uh, that should be pretty much it for this. That's all I really see the Bondo on this. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll get some more stuff revealed uh, when we actually uh, put the first coat of primer on it. That's the great thing about primer is that first coat shows any imperfections and you'll be able to see them. They'll jump right out. It's kind of hard when you get down to the bare wood to be able to see that. So we'll let this harden up and then we'll take a look. While we're waiting for those bolt holes to dry, I went ahead and moved down to the bottom. Now for this, the main uh, point of, uh, you know, focus is going to be about from here to here. Um, it looks like this got soft at some point in time. We already hit it with the wood hardener and it hardened it up uh, really well. Gives a good base for this to, to go on. Um, so what we're going to do is rebuild up this corner because I can feel that it slopes down. The rest of it actually feels really good just from the sanding, so we're going to let that just to continue. So we're going to go from right here, uh, this little mark here, all the way here, and then just rebuild this corner up. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. I'll mix this up a little bit more. That's a little more like it. It's still hot, and that's actually a lot of creamer, so we're going to have to cream hardener. So we're going to have to work fast on this, but we want it, we want it to harden up pretty quick because you know when you're building up corners and stuff, uh, you might use a little bit more hardener than normal. Um, just because you want it to stand up and hold a lot quicker. So 
we're gonna go ahead and start skim coating this and what you want to do is kind of do a fade like I, I like to pull it across the edge like this and it doesn't matter if you get it on the base you know you're gonna come back and clean it and then go ahead and and just do a skim because you want to kind of fade it into the cabinet and if it, you got any extra on the bottom that's fine and then we want to go ahead and hit this corner upwards because we want to build up this corner so One more time, just give it a nice skim. And like I said, most of the work that you can get done during this process, the better, because otherwise you're just gonna be sanding and sanding and sanding and sanding for days. So I'm actually gonna leave it right like that. I feel good about that right there. And uh, we will need probably a second coat here, but the key to Bondo and doing good Bondo is do thin layers. A lot of times people just goo it up too much, you know, try to do it all in one shot. And you can't do that. A lot of times I'll do this thin layer, maybe I'll come back and sand it and I'll just see how this corner looks. If I don't like it, I'll do it again, but I'll just move back my focus, you know, we were doing from here to here, I'll move back my focus from here to here. So you can't be afraid to, you know, do it layer by layer and, uh, you know, just do it over time. Um, because, you know, if you don't, it's gonna just, you know, you're gonna make your work so much harder. Another cool little trick that you can do, hang on a second, let me get one. is if you get yourself a razor blade. I just use these regular shop razor blades like this. And as you can see right here, it's a little gooped off the side. Once it starts setting up a little bit, you can go ahead and almost like a sculptor, just shave that off. And that's gonna save you a lot of time too, because if, if you pre-sculpt it and pre-shave, you know, you gotta be very easy, very, very steady handed. But if you do it, you can actually shave the shape into it where it's a sharp edge like that. And that really minimizes your sanding. And you only got a little bit of time that you can do that. Um, but you can clean up your work if you get some, you know, drips. Uh, it's a lot easier to do that when it's, than when it's fully hardened. And then you can go ahead and get that all out of there. But yeah, so you can just, uh, you know, shave off kind of like you're sculpting. And I do that a lot of times, like on edges and stuff. I'll come back and I'll just shave it with just a razor. Um, you know, and, and if you mess up, guys, it's Bondo. Just put some more on, sand it down. Uh, the only way you're going to get good at it is by trial and error. So we're going to go ahead and let all this harden. We'll come back. I'll probably let it sit for about an hour. And then we'll come back and take a look and see what we got. All right, we went ahead and waited about an hour. And uh, this is all pretty dry. Well, it is dry. We can uh, go ahead and give it a sanding and feather it in. And then we'll go ahead and sand the, uh, the side horizontal bolt holes. And after that, we'll take a look at it. It might be ready for a uh, primer. And I think that's where we'll stop for today is after we get it primered. But uh, let's go ahead and sand this down and see how it looks. actually um, so the key to it is you you don't want to feel any transition whatsoever this this needs to be thinner than a piece of paper and this looks pretty good too I'm gonna go ahead and feather this edge and then go ahead and go across the bottom I do think I'm gonna need another coat of of uh, Bondo here on this corner but I think I'm gonna go ahead and primer it first that way we can go ahead and see any other things because this is gonna be such a small area we'll be able to see all the other ones and then hit them all at the same time. So let's finish the sanding this out and then we'll move up to the horizontal holes.
happy with this down here. That came back really nice. I'll bring you over there to see that. So all that part that was kind of sunk in, we basically finished it off with the Bondo. And that's the whole thing is like, yeah, I had Bondo up to here, but we don't really need it because we just want to have it indistinguishable, which I cannot feel any difference whatsoever until I get to this edge. And you can actually see, because when you sand Bondo, it'll go lighter. So the parts that I did wasn't able to hit, it means it's because it's lower than the actual cabinet. So I'm just going to need a little bit of skim right there to finish off that corner. But as you can see, the corners of it are, are really sharp. We just got to raise up this to match the cabinet. So that's, that's really good. And um, that whole bottom piece came back really, really, really well. So we'll go ahead and go down here. And we'll get set up and we'll knock these out real quick. sanding disc it's spent uh, when you're doing bondo a lot of times it will uh, it'll grab and grip to it and you know if you leave that on there enough I just kept going on this it would actually start grabbing the bondo and pulling it up which you don't want you want to sand it so Actually, you know, I can still feel a little bit, but same with down at the bottom. It's, this is just going to be such a light skim coat. Um, we filled most of it. We filled up the divot that we made with the bolt. Um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and wipe down the whole cabinet, and then we'll go ahead and get this side primed, and I think that's where we'll stop for this episode. Um, because the other side is going to be just identical to this. You're not going to miss anything. And then uh, next episode, we'll come back. We'll start addressing the front coin door, coin, uh, coin door area and then uh, the graphics on the front and uh, maybe the inside of the cabinet a little bit uh, get it cleaned up for black paint so uh, yeah we'll get this wiped up and then we'll do uh, do some primer all right i'm all set up for paint i went ahead and then wiped this all down uh, with um, some simple green and uh, yeah head change shirts too during the break uh, it got very hot out here i was quite sweaty um, and i figured sun's out guns out right it's still sun out so here we go, uh, we're going to keep going and uh, get a good layer or maybe two of primer on this side. And like I said, I'll go ahead and do the other side off camera. Um, you know, it's just all the same stuff, just on the opposite side. And then in the next video, we'll go ahead and address maybe that bottom piece there, the front, and uh, just get this thing ready for paint. I'm using Kills Latex 2 uh, White. I like to use uh, white instead of gray on uh, some of the lighter colors because this white will make that vibrant yellow just really, really pop. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I got a four inch uh, foam cabinet roller. I normally use six inch. I am out of six inch at the moment. Uh, so this will work out. I just got to do more coats and you know, overlap everything. And uh, so we'll get started. And like I said, primer really shows where you still got to have work. I mean, you can get a cabinet and you think it's perfect, and then once you get a coat or two of primer on it, you can actually see, oh, there's a nick, there's a dent, 
And those are the things you can just come back and skim coat over with uh, the Bondo. But like I said, you can't do that. You know, you can only get it as good as you can see it on plain wood. And the primer really helps everything pop out. So the key to getting this smooth is just nice, long, overlapping strokes. Don't use too much paint. You know, spread it out nice and smooth. Your, uh, I feel your primer coat is is actually the most important of all the coats um, because this is your base that you start off of. So I normally do three coats of primer, then I sand with 220 before I put my regular ones on there. My regular coats of color. I don't know if it's the humidity, but what this roller does not want to roll right now. So we good. There it goes. And the weird thing was back in the day, when they built these cabinets, they didn't use primer underneath them. Um, you know, probably cost savings and you know, these things were built to make money, not live in people's houses for 30 years, so I don't think they assumed many would still be around in 2016. I love Cubert though, man. I remember playing this as a kid in the arcades. It's weird how kids nowadays, though, they know Pac-Man, but they don't know Cubert. And I thought Cubert was pretty popular. Like my kids have no idea who Cubert is. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this cabinet. Uh, nothing special, just getting some nice even coat of uh, primer on it. And then uh, we'll come back in a couple minutes to take a look. All right, guys, episode one of the Cubert Restores is in the bag. I got it all primed. It's looking really good, man. It's uh, super flat. I think I got to do one more skin coat over those bolt holes on the side. It kind of sucked in. Sometimes it does that. Sometimes you get away with it. Uh, usually two coats to do that, but the rest of this, man, every edge looks sharp. It looks really, really good, and I'm really excited how this is going to come out. Um, so I got two coats of primer on there. What I'll do is I'll probably go ahead and do that Bondo, maybe that back bottom corner, which actually looks good on its own, but I'm a perfectionist when it comes to these things. Um, get to go ahead and cover those, and then get the other side done. I'll do that off camera. It's going to be the same exact as this side. I don't, I don't need to bore you guys with watching two of the same thing. And then uh, I think next episode we'll start tackling this front area, um, get all around the coin door done, that front bottom edge, and any part in here will stand out to those uh, paintball splats or whatever those are in there. God, you find some crazy things in these, don't you? Um, but anyways, we'll keep going. And then we still got the leaning one. Remember, this was the ugly one. So this one's not ugly anymore. It looks really good, and I think this is gonna go pretty quick. Um, we should be getting to the, the final color here shortly, probably in an episode or two. And then uh, we'll tackle fixing the bomb in that one because no game should end up as wall art. Uh, for the most part, you know, unless it has termites or something, every game is salvageable. As you'll see in the first episode of the real show, uh, my Pac-Man, it spent 18 days underwater, fully submerged under like five and a half, you know, almost five feet of water. And uh, it stayed that way for, God, three weeks. And I'm going to build that thing back, back to new better than this. So uh, thank you so much for subscribing. If you got any questions, man, a lot of people are hitting me up on the Facebook page. It's just facebook.com forward slash arcade body shop. Or you can email us, uh, arcade body shop at gmail.com. Uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If I can't answer your question, or if you just got suggestions for the show, but uh, if you got questions too, shoot them my way. If I know how to fix it, I'll tell you. And uh, I'll give you my opinion. And I got friends uh, that know a lot more technical stuff than me. Really good friends with the guys at Arcade Repair Tips. Uh, they're amazing guys, Jonathan and Tim, so uh, be sure to check out their stuff as well. Till next time, I've got another episode coming up shortly, but subscribe, tell your friends. I want to build this as one of the biggest arcade channels on YouTube, and you guys have been helping me so much so far. We haven't even started yet, so uh, enjoy yourself, work hard, take pride in your work, and I'll see you guys soon.